<laughs> All right, guys, we are back with you with a uh, another training, another sales training. This is going to be huge for people who are just starting out, even people who've been uh, been around the block for a little bit. We're going to talk a, a bit about infinite prospecting. Wow, infinite. I love that infinite. word. This is a really nice title, I would say. I'm kind of proud of this one. Sure. Way better than unlimited prospecting. Yeah. All right, guys. So the thing to understand when it comes to sales is that in many respects, it's a game about turning over stones. So what do I mean by that? Um, yeah, the question is like, imagine if someone, imagine if like there was like a scenario where for every 10 stones that you turned over, one was going to be a diamond. Yeah. Well, actually, Michael, if I could actually jump in for a second. Please. I, I actually do go mining for, for crystals and I do go mining for in, in this place called Her in Herkimer, New York, and I mine for Herkimer diamonds. And the entire purpose of the mining is to smash open rocks. And some rocks will have these quartz crystals that look like diamonds in them and some of them won't. And sometimes you smash one open and it's got an entire pocket of jewels. It's like a treasure chest and it's incredible. Sometimes you get absolutely nothing for cracking open a huge rock that looks like it will. Yeah. Well, you know, to jump on that analogy, you know, Eric, if you only had to crack open 10 stones and then you were going to find like one of those treasure troves, you know, totally. how excited would you be about, crack, you know, hitting the mine? I would like, I would get there and line up my 10 stones and I would be like, bang, 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 bang. No. Um, but what about if it was, you know, 20 to one? Uh, I'd probably make sure I had a friend with me <laughs> and like, uh, and I started earlier in the day and uh, made sure I had the right clothes on even more, you know? And would you still go out mining if it was 50 to one? Totally. I mean, I know how, I know the thrill of getting one of these, uh, getting one of these, you know, diamonds is, is pretty high. But, but even, is it worth it if it's even 100 to one? You know, I might not, the thing is about 50 to one or 100 to one is it might even stop me from taking the drive out there. Oh. Um, yeah. It's like a two and a half hour drive. So for me to, to go out there, it might even be three from here, but for me to go out there and then know I got to bang on a hundred stones to get one. And I might even bang on 198 and get two or 297, right. And get three. That is, um, it's like the the barrier for me to even drive there and then for me to the, the tools and then how much time I'm going to spend there, it really does change the game quite considerably. Yeah. Well, because you're putting in so much more effort, you know, to get that reward when, when the ratios are 100 to one or 200 to one, like the, you know, you're putting in so much effort just to get that one payoff. And obviously guys, we're not here. We're not talking about diamonds. So as we're talking about, deals, you know, yep. deals for your SEO business. And when we say turning over stones, what we mean is having conversations with business owners. Like how many conversations with different business owners are you going to have um, before you get a deal? You know, what is that ratio? Is it 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 51, 100 to 1? And as you can see, um, the higher that ratio is, or the smaller the ratio is, I don't even know, um, it, it determines like, you know, how much effort you want to put in or, or if you feel like it's even going to be worth it. And, you know, we created the top 100 first. And the reason we created the top 100 is because the top 100 is going to give you referrals. And by far, referrals are going to give you the best ratio for, for actually like getting in touch with qualified business owners and closing. There's like this, um, there's this idea that when it comes to your closing rate, like how many deals you can close versus how many demos you give, it's one thing if it's a cold audience, but if it's a referral, you're supposed to close like way, way more. Right, Eric? Yeah. I mean, people, if it's that, if it's a referral and it's a business that meets the criteria for what you, know, you want to have on board, you should be closing over 60%. And it, you know, if you if you don't close like three out of four, then there's there's a problem with um with how you with how you handle these things. And compare that to to what ratio, which would be normal on a cold audience. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it would be pretty reasonable to say like a little bit one out of three, 
three yeah. out of 10. Yeah. So it's almost double when you have your referrals. So that's the reason why you want to go with referrals. You want to work the top 100. It's also really important that you just understand this concept that, you know, business, it really just boils down to like, does this business owner actually want to grow their business? And you're going to ask a bunch of people and they're going to say, no, I'm fine. Or, you know, no, I don't want to grow or no, I've got it handled or, or whatever. No, I had, I don't have any advertising budget, but then you'll find somebody who's actually qualified, you know, who, who can, um, who can invest in your services. Literally. I mean, just think about it yesterday, Michael, right? Literally. I just called this guy up and he's like, yeah, I want to hear this out. And then he was just happened to be in a position where he, he was like, yeah, I've been meaning to do this and I just haven't gotten around to it. That it's like, literally that's it. Yeah. So if we're not talking about referrals and if we're talking about, you know, infinite prospecting and being able to, um, being able to identify businesses on your own, the answer to, to turning over fewer stones is to get really, really clear and dialed in to what makes a quality prospect. And this is all about playing the odds. You know, this is getting the odds in your favor so that the businesses that you approach are much, much, much more likely to invest in your services. So there's a couple of things that you really want to make sure of before you, uh, before you sort of add somebody to your prospect list. Yep. And uh, Michael, if I could, is like back to the analogy of the uh, mining these crystals, is like essentially there are different indicators on the outside of a rock to understand whether or not that rock is likely to have these different crystals in it. And you can look at them. It doesn't mean that every single one of these rocks has crystals in them, but all of the rocks that have those markings on it, uh, sorry, all of the crystals that are found are from rocks that have those markings on them. And that's essentially what we're talking about right here with this. Mm -hmm. So these four things that we're, we're, that we're going to talk about, these are things that if this prospect and their business has them, it highly increases the likelihood in which they will not just buy from you, but buy from you at a very healthy price point. Cool. So the first one is that they've, their service has a high ticket price. You know, either their product is expensive or their service is expensive. So when we say expensive, we mean, you know, a couple hundred dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars. So, more. yeah. So something to stay away from would be like um, a bakery, you know, or a barber shop, you know, or, uh, you know, something, something that's really where something where you'd need a ton of volume in order for them, for their SEO service to, to pay off. Cause we were, we're talking about, Asking somebody to invest five ninety five, nine ninety five, fourteen ninety five a month, twenty five hundred, so, three thousand, whatever. Exactly. It may be. Yeah. So even if you're charging six hundred bucks a month, like how many how many cookies is this bakery going to need to sell in order for them to justify your price? Like it would be a ton. So by getting this high ticket product or service, you only need a handful of um, you know of of sales in order for the business to see a positive return on investment with you. And we're going to show you what oh, these an incredible look return like on in assessment, an incredible return. Oh my God. A couple of sales is, makes it gives you an incredible, mm -hmm. um, gets you an incredible ROI, but yes, for them. And, uh, just, let me just clarify the high ticket product or service. So for example, like, um, let's say somebody is, uh, they make driveways, right? Well, sometimes a driveway might cost $4,000 in material, but only $500 in labor. So just to kind of understand those, those margins to give you an idea of how much profit the company makes versus how much the service costs. So for example, think about a lawyer. If they go to court and handle a DUI ticket for you, they might charge you $2,500 and it costs them $10 in gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, or well, in today's world, they do everything on Zoom. So, you know, it's even less than that, you know, but like, I'm glad you mentioned um, profit, Eric, because um, I made a mistake once of going into the garage door niche because I'm like, Hey, you know, a brand new garage door, that costs you $2,000. But what I didn't realize is that garage doors tend to have the worst profit margins of the home service industry. So um, it's a high ticket, but it's also, the um, the profit because again you know how many jobs or deals or clients or or patients do we need to deliver a business in order for them to see a, a return on investment and you want that to be really low um, the second thing and I want to kind of like bold this and underline this 
and like asterisk it and then have it jump out the page is somebody who's already advertising. So why there, Michael? There are companies out there who believe in advertising and there's companies that just don't. Um, and there's a lot of companies out there. I know it may sound crazy to you, but there's a lot of companies out there who are just perfectly happy where they are, you know, with, they don't want to grow anymore. But if somebody's advertising, that's a really, 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 really strong indication that one, that they believe in advertising, they believe in, in investing in advertising, and two, that they actually want to grow. So if you see a business that fits all of these other descriptions and at the same time is already advertising, that is a huge golden bullet. And so you can actually hunt for companies that advertise and we'll show you how to do that in a second. The third thing is a short sales cycle. So you want to work with a company that gets paid immediately or almost immediately. So to give another example of this is um, I used to work with Brazilian jiu-jitsu gyms. And uh, this was a mistake because on the one hand, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu gyms, they might, um, they might seem to have a high ticket offer because they charge $150 a month and people stick with them for like, you know, a minimum of like, six or nine months. So, you know, it's a couple hundred dollars, but the problem is they don't get paid until all the way in the end. And so if you talk to a business owner, the business owner actually only thinks of it as like, you know, how much they collected that first month, you know, or if you work with somebody where um, they're not getting paid for a long period of time in the future, it's, uh, it's going to be a dead end for you. So stick away from short sales, uh, from, from things with long sales cycles. Yeah. Just another example, real estate agent, right? They could take 90 days or a buck 20 days in order for them to get paid. Or this is another, like in our industry, right? There's commercial HVAC and then there's residential. So most companies, when they charge a business, they give them a, like a net 30 or net 90, meaning like they give them that many days to actually even pay the bill and sometimes even longer. So if you don't see the money right away and you're outlaying this money and then there's like a triple, like a double delay, it's very hard for people to just say yes. In other words, people need to imagine themselves collecting the money. And if, and if they can see that in a short period of time, it makes it easier for them to say yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the fourth thing we have on this list is make sure it's a company. We're all selling SEO here. So make sure it's a company that can actually be helped by selling but with SEO. So what this means is that this client's customers search online, they search on Google to find the client. So um, you've got to make sure that they actually can be helped with SEO. To give you a really quick example, um, this is the commercial example. Um, you know, we work with um, HV, the HVAC niche and um, we work with businesses that serve residential customers because individuals who own houses, they look to Google if, you know, their AC goes out. But we found out that um, commercial HVAC companies, they don't believe they can be helped by SEO because they believe that for commercial deals, it all happens via referral. So actually, you know, it can, can be helped by SEO. And then also like they believe they can be helped. That is by SEO. so perfect, right? Yeah. It's like, um, I mean, just the most important way of look, it's like the, what's it called? Something bias. What's it called? Confirmation bias. Confirmation. Exactly. It's I built my entire business through referrals. So people aren't looking for, for commercial HVAC contractors online. It's exactly that. So you were saying you were going to talk about somebody who's already advertising, Michael. Tell me more. Well, um, before we get into that, because um, we're going to talk about how you can find somebody who's already advertising, but look, here's just the answer. You know, we gave you like these, the qualifying stuff, but here's the answer. The answer is really just traditional niches. So traditional SEO niches are traditional for a reason. So there's three categories that fall, you know, that you'll find these in which these niches fall. Is that it's my grammar, right? I feel like I'm talking like Yoda at this point. Yeah, so home services. Yeah. So you got home services, which are like roofers, plumbers, landscapers, home remodelers. I mean, we're, we're in HVAC, which is uh, yeah, home flooring, services. Windows flooring. and doors. Electrical. Thank you. Yeah, electrical. Those are all great. Um, uh, mold removal, water restoration, all the home services niches. Just go to Home Advisor. You're going to find them. Um, the other one is legal. You go to like divorce lawyer, a DUI lawyer, personal injury lawyer, 
Will's in his, uh, Will's in his states. Will's trust in states lawyer. Probate. All that jazz. Also criminal, of course. Don't forget. Immigration. Yeah. You can go to avo, A-V-V-O dot com to find the different types of uh, lawyers that are out there um, or healthcare. So healthcare would fall into like dentists, uh, dentists by a lot of podiatrists, doctors, med spa, we got orthopedic, plastic surgeon comes in here, plastic surgery. I, I think it's a pretty uh, tough niche. It's a pretty tough it's one. A, well, it's a tough niche and... Um... You know, they, they're expecting a certain, I, I kind of just wouldn't even mess with them. But yeah. realistically, um, there's also things that are related to that, something like laser hair removal or like, you know, Botox. That's that's kind of like in the med spa realm, tattoo removal, you know, tan, well, tanning salons are actually not bad. But anyway, people who do these different things, they do a bunch of different services that are very profitable. Now, what's really cool about these niches is that each of these niches are or, or many of these niches are actually infinite from your perspective. So what I mean by that is that every year there are new entrants in the niche and the new entrants that enter the niche each year exceeds the number of connections that you can make in a given year. So for example, let's say that there are 80,000 plumbers in the United States, but every single year, there are 25,000 new ones join and then 25,000 leave the industry. That basically means that every single year you could be reaching out, as long as you're reaching out to less than 25,000 a year, the, you'll never, you'll never you know, run out of prospects in that niche. And it's also really, this is also an important concept to understand because you may be thinking to yourself, oh, you know, like somebody's already talked to them, you know, like traditional niches, somebody's already talked to them, somebody's already like worked with them. But that's not always the case because you've got new entrants, which means that there's somebody out there who literally just started his plumbing company yesterday, you know, or maybe just started his plumbing company nine months ago or 18 months ago and is finally ready to invest in marketing. And so far, he hasn't given anyone, you know, the light of day. So um, traditional niches, they're traditional for a reason. And the reason is they work. So um, I know my strong recommendation is to, uh, to target those traditional niches. Also, by the way, Eric has sold into over 40 different niches, you know, yep. um, in his history. And, you know, what could you say? Maybe just give a little bit of something about, uh, about these niches. Well, uh, I just want to kind of echo what you're saying first about the, the people going in and out of business, just like a complete thing. Uh, there was people that used to prospect by going to the state's new business, like, organization because you have to register with the state. And they're just like hundreds of businesses every single day. So that's the first thing. But as far as speaking to different niches, it's the value of like being in a specific niche is extremely high because it increases your ability to have a, an educated conversation with that prospect and have them see you as somebody that understands their business as opposed to somebody that, you know, is just like trying to get them to do this marketing thing. Cause they have, they have a lot of conversations around this and sometimes only knowing one or two different things about that industry can automatically get you in the door in the secret back door um, for them, you know, really willing to hear you out. Is that kind of what you're looking for, Michael? No, um, I mean, that's, that's definitely, it's definitely helpful, you know, but I mean, what I, what I was kind of curious also about is um, like this idea of, you know, our traditional niche is dead. Like, I don't know if anyone's saying oh, that. I don't think I've ever uh, heard it even, but like, oh, well, there's a thought that, well, there's a thought that like, oh, Michael are they and too Eric saturated or something. Yeah. Or they might just think, oh, well, Michael and Eric are in HVAC, so I shouldn't do that. Like that might just be the first thought that someone might have. And, you know, couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, the, the fact is that there are, there's over a hundred thousand HVAC contractors. There's over a hundred, it could be, it's like, could be way more than that hundred thousand plumbers and like three million, like 300,000 dentists, some sort of crazy number or something like that. And, you know, all you essentially need to know is that if every single person who ever watched this video got a hundred clients in these niches, there'd still be thousands and thousands left. Yeah. Totally. All right. So how do I find these businesses? Um, I think one of the best, like again, guys, top 100 list, top 100 
use your networking skills. Like you can just pick up the phone these days. That's going to be your best way because that's going to help your ratio for the number of stones you got to turn before you find a diamond. But if you, if you want to, if you want to do infinite prospecting, first place I would look is businesses who are advertising around town. So I would look in my hometown, drive around on the main highways, and then just jot down the names of businesses that are advertising on billboards. Open up your mailbox, see who's sending direct mail out. Turn on the local radio stations, see who's advertising there, who's doing any other type of local traditional advertising. My biggest deal ever, Michael, came from a dentist who sent me a piece of direct mail. I just looked at this piece of direct mail, got home, I was, I get, got home from work, looked at it, and I was like, this is a piece of crap. This is a terrible thing. And I, and I went online and I tried to find the website and that was messed up too. So I called this guy up the next day. And before I got to work, I told my manager, I said, I'm going to sell this guy digital marketing. He's like, go for it, buddy. Later that day, he signed up for $5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So that'll give you a little bit of an idea of what's possible here. Another thing is you can look at who's advertising on Google AdWords or Google local services. So if you're going to look on AdWords or local services, you're going to need to type in some keywords. So you type in the keywords associated with a niche that you want to target. Um, and along the same lines, you can look at the bottom of page one or page two for specific keywords in your niche. Um, the thing about keywords is they're usually very, very obvious. You know, what you would be searching for to find that person is generally what everybody else is searching for. So it's not like, just don't overthink that. Um, another thing you can do is uh, search in the top 500 cities in the USA. So uh, I just wanted to do this really quickly. If I go to top 500 US cities, um, here we go. Oh, here you go. List of U.S. cities by population. We got all of this list. So what you can do is you just go down this list. So San Jose, for example. Um, say we're we're looking for um, roofer San Jose. Roofer San Jose. This is the um, Google local services. I tend not to click on people's ads because I don't want to, I don't want them to get charged for it. You know, especially if I want this person to eventually be my client, but what you could do is trio roofing contractor, which is TRO. They actually don't get charged for that one unless you call them. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But good. don't, yeah. You don't need to click on So it. here you go. Trio roofing contractor. You go to their website and now we got a bunch of their, uh, their, their business information. Okay. So that was finding people on Google local services. But if we wanted to find people who are on the bottom of page one, we'd go all the way to the bottom. So this Eastman Roofing, Lindy Roofing, Cupertino Roofing, go to the second page, Certified Roofing, Maximum Roof Care, et cetera, et cetera. So you can just do that you know, to find uh, people. Now, okay, here's, here's something. Um, I am from New Jersey and- um, Fact. Fact, true facts. I am from New Jersey. Um, Eric is from New York. Um, I have gotten a ton of clients in New Jersey, but the number of clients that I've gotten in New Jersey or the tri state area through cold methods versus referrals. Like is outbound like, versus inbound, essentially. Yeah, outbound versus inbound is like, it's, it's like, it's comical. It's absolutely comical. Like, like, let me explain this. Let me explain this a little bit more. So when I lived in New, I lived in Jersey City um, from 2014 to 2020. And by the time I left Jersey City, every business pretty much that I would visit were, was a client of mine. So I sent my kids to this, this private school, this private international school. They were a client. I um, had my business in a co-working space. They were a client. I did Brazilian jiu-jitsu. They were a client. My kids had a pediatrician. He was a client. Uh, my barber, he was a client. Like the list goes on and on and on. Like pretty much anybody that I went in contact with, like the guys who um, came to my house to do my blinds, they became a client. Um, the, the guy that I would uh, buy flowers from for my wife, he was a client. You know, so like literally every single business that I went to, you know, or that I talked to became a client of mine. But I spent 
tons of time reaching out to people in the tri-state area cold, and I didn't get any clients that way. And Eric, maybe you can talk about like in your years of cold calling, how has your experience been in the tri-state area? Well, let's take a look, Michael. If we look at the population of Newark, which is 8 million people, and, uh, and like the surrounding cities, right? It's probably about one-tenth of the country, mm-hmm. um, really legit one-tenth of the country. And then um, I look at the 500 deals that I've gotten in SEO uh, and digital marketing. I, it's more than that, but let's just call it 500. And then, and then we, you'd think like about 50, 50. Of those yeah. deals would be in New York, but I could probably count them on my hand, on two hands, how many of those deals. I can think of a guy in Long Island, um, the, my, my personal tax guy who was not a cold thing. Uh, uh, oh, that dentist you're talking about. Yeah, but that was, that was the direct mail one. No. Yeah, the, the point that- I can't. I can't point, think of one. Any else? The point that I, I, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, uh, the way that it works out is a lot of um, members, you know, of Fusion come from California and New York, and so um, if you guys are going to use this infinite prospecting method, and you li- happen to live in the tri-state area, I would strongly advise that you look at like the top 500 cities in the USA and you steer away from that area. Um, that's just my personal experience with it. And again, I wanted to start up by letting you guys know, like, like pretty much every business, like those businesses will work with you. They want to grow. They want to invest just like everybody else. But there's something about, you know, people from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, where it's like highly, highly skeptical unless they actually know you or see you, which is why it's actually easier to close them now that I think about it, if you do know them, because then it's like, you know what I mean? They, they think everybody else is a scam artist. Yeah, so they don't let you, you know in the inner circle. But let me, yeah. let me just be clear. Um, there is no such thing as an area that doesn't work. I just want to make that very clear. I think all that Michael and I are trying to say is if you had to start somewhere, that wouldn't be a good, your, your best for, place to start. All right. So let's fill in the prospect sheet. So um, we put together this prospect sheet for you. Let's see. Josh. Top 100. Here it is. There we go. Okay. All right. So we talked about that one company, Trio Roofing Contractors. So we're going to take this. We're going to enter it in over here. Trio Roofing. Let's find their address. It's usually on the very bottom of the page. Oh, it looks like they got two different addresses. That's weird. Whatever. Here's an address. If we want to send them mail or something like that, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's see. Here's a phone number. We got a phone number. All right. Let's find the business owner's name. Um, one of the ways that I like to find business owner's name is by putting in the name of the company then put in LinkedIn, True Roofing Systems, True Roofing Contractors. Where are these guys based out of? Uh, San Jose. Okay. You said San Jose. That's what you did. Yep. Jim. Jim Eastman. No, no, that's Jim Eastman Roofing. Is this? Is this guy? No, this is Ontario. Maybe Eastman Roofing. All right. No, Canadians buy roofing too, though, Michael. Yeah. So this is uh, their Facebook page. Let's see if we could find it on their Facebook page. If you go sometimes into the about, you'll sometimes get some more information. It's not always possible to find it. All right, I'm gonna try one more thing. So this is good. You guys are getting like everything that I do to find it. Um, There's this company called Manta and um, sometimes they have a business owner's information. So this has the address as the website Similar businesses, location, employees, contacts. How was if I click under contacts? Rafael Atias. Do you know why they do that? What? They just don't want people to be scanning it. Um, they don't. Want, they don't want people scanning the website, um, and then copy pasting like different bots to do that. So that's why they have like a link reveal, yeah. a click to show contact information. Yeah, I don't know. This might be the guy. Oh, another thing what you can do also is you can look on Yelp. Yelp for Trio Roofing Contractor, San Jose. Sometimes that'll uh, 
if you can find their Yelp profile, that'll sometimes do it. So anyway, um, I'm not going to spend too much time more digging around. If you can't find the name of a, of a business, um, in this not case, well, you, you could just call them up. You could call them up and, and do the old, uh, you know, no name script. But um, for the purposes of people just starting out, you know, like complete newbies, maybe only fill out your list with companies that you can find the business owner's name. As an entrepreneur, like you're, you're taking your infusion, you are an entrepreneur, you are setting out, you know, to, uh, to do this on your own, you get paid to solve problems. So um, I guess maybe a problem to solve is, you know, figuring out the different methods that you can use to build your list and find the, uh, the, the names and the emails. You can always call them up though and just say like, hey, um, I wonder if you can help me out. Who's the person in your company who handles new business conversations, you know, like marketing and stuff like that. Uh, usually the person will uh, give you the name of the business owner. All right. So that's the prospect sheet. Once we filled out the prospect sheet. So um, again, work your top 100 list first, but if you're not getting any prospects, um, I would spend, you know, a couple of hours to fill out your prospect list to get at least, you know, like 50 names on that list. That's a pretty good one to sh start with. And then what you can do is this is the method that we're teaching you of, of outreaching in order to, and this is again, so that you have to, you know, turn over fewer stones. You're going to do a lot of legwork up front, but it's going to pay off in the end where you're going to have to, you know, potentially uh, flip over fewer stones. So a value video is it's one of the ultimate foot in the door, you know, methods. So it's basically a quick five minute video that has your prospects see the value of SEO. So um, there's an example of a value video, which we're gonna include. So you can see what this actually looks like. Um, and then I'll show you, you know, what we would go over in the value video in a second. But essentially what you do is you record yourself. So you can use a webcam like this, you record your screen and you can use um, recording software like Screencastify, Loom, Screenflow or Camtasia. And you create a short video that shows the traffic value of a competitor to the business. And then you explain that, hey, the, like the teaser is, you know, let's set up a call. I can show you, you know, how you can, you can get here. You know, I can show you the path for you being able to do this in your business. So um, the workflow in terms of your prospecting is that every single day you want to send out one, you want to create one to three of these value videos every single day, five days a week. Um, then what you want to do is, um, you know, when you create the video, you'll have a link to the video and you want to mail, like mail, like through the mail, email, social media message, and call everybody that you've sent this, um, this video to. And what you want to do is you want to um, call each prospect every single day for five days until you get you know, a hold of them or until you hear uh, no. And you want to make sure that they got the video link and you want to ask for the demo. Yep. Okay. Any thoughts on that, Eric, before we go into like an example? The, well, my only thoughts is, so Michael, just remind me, which, uh, how, am I, how am I finding out the traffic value? Am I using? Yeah. So I'm going to show you guys. So we use um, a company called uh, Ahrefs, but if you're using Fusion Command Center, um, there, is a, um, there is like a feature there that, that sort of mimics this. So um, what I did here is I searched AC Repair Denver. And uh, so now I, I live in Denver and I happen to know that this company Brothers Plumbing is like a big company in the area, right? Oh, you bet they are. So what I did was I took Brothers Plumbing, I took this URL, I went into Ahrefs and I put the URL here. And what I found, this is the number we're looking for. They've got a traffic value of $73,000 a month. So what that basically means is that if they wanted to pay Google AdWords, for the free traffic that's coming to their site from search engines, they'd be paying Google AdWords $73,000 a month. Another way to put it is that search engines are giving them $73,000 a month of free advertising. You know, how much that's would serious. you like to have an additional 73,000 of free advertising? That's huge. So then what I did was I, um, I looked at a company who's um, advertising on this page. So this absolute electrical 
I, I just typed in absolute electrical and then heating and air automatically showed up. And then I went to their website, which is right here. Are you working on these guys, Michael? No, we should put together something for them now. And then I went to Ahrefs and I found that their traffic value is 2000. So to create a value video for, you know, these guys, it would be something like, you know, well, I'd find the business owner, like say his name is Ted or something like, hey, Ted, I saw that you were, um, you were advertising um, in the Google, Google local section for AC Repair Denver. And um, I was taking a look at your website and I saw that there was a bunch of things that, you know, uh, that can be adjusted, which are going to make a big impact on the number of visitors, the number of traffic that you get to your site. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, you know, Brothers is a company um, in the area, and they're going to know Brothers because they're giant, it is a company in your area that's doing really, really well. Um, they have a lot of these solutions that I'm talking about already on their website. And if I look at their website, I put them into this, uh, this tool, you'll see that they have a traffic value of $72,000 or $73,000 a month. Um, when I put your company in here, you guys have a traffic value of only $2,000 a month. So what I'd like to do is set up a call with you, just take 15 minutes in front of a computer where I can show you the changes that you can make to your site in order for you to get a ton more uh, traffic and a lot more phone calls uh, for your business. And then you just tell them how to contact you. So I'm in. I'll do it. That's a value video. That's, well, that's basically, that is it. Yeah. And what, what's the, let me just kind of, the mechanism, um, in their brains that's going to have them sit down and have a call with you is like, oh, wow, look what's possible. Wow, those numbers are big numbers. Like there's some sort of thing that they see there that, that whether it's, you know, they're missing out on or what is possible or like they might not even have known that they could have gotten that much business. It's just like, oh, those guys, everyone's got their own like a uh, ticker that has them tick to take action competition, possibility for making more money, whatever it may be. These, these are very compelling videos. And we know because we've been, you know, this has been a technology for almost a decade. Yeah. And the thing to, um, the thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, a lot of people, they, it's very nebulous about like how SEO can help them. Like, it's like, I think it'll help. I don't know how much it'll help. And what's great about this tool and this metric is that we're actually giving people like something to hang their hat on. They can find out like, oh, this is how much it helps me, which is like a major, major difference. So what you want to do is you want to send out the direct mail, then you want to call them up. And when you call them up, just make sure like, here's your attempts. So this first attempt would be like, you know, this is the number of days, by the way, it's not like the number of times. So this one might have been like call, you know, call slash email on eleven nineteen, for example. And then what you could say is like spoke to, you know, Wendy. Um, she said um, hasn't gotten uh, mail yet, you know, and uh, and I emailed uh, the video link. Owner coming back from vacation. 713, whatever. Yeah, exa exactly. And then what you want to do is you want to do here. All right, next day. So called, you know, 1120. And what you could put on this one is you just, you just complete, you just continue adding to it. You know, spoke to Ted, um, said was busy and call him back on Friday, whatever. You know, and so you can say, just say like, again, call maybe the 23rd was a Friday. And then it said like, um, you know, Ted mentioned he, um, you know, just hired five more technicians and bought a new truck demo set for next week. And what you can do is you can actually, I, I prefer to, set it like this. So this way you can read all the comments. So this way when you're calling, you know, and reaching out, you can, um, you can see the, the different information that you have um, for everybody. It's really easy. Um, it's really easy for you to understand. Um, when you book a demo, you want to use it on Calendly. So you guys can go to calendly.com. Um, this is going to probably open up my own account. Oh, great. So what you can do is you can sign up for a, uh, a free uh, Calendly account. And um, you can set it up where, you know, somebody can um, 
can book a call with you. And uh, we have all of our, our calls on Zoom. So, um, you know, basically just set it up where you insert your Zoom link into Calendly. And then when somebody books a call with you, just insert it into Calendly. They'll get a bunch of reminders about the demo. You'll get reminders. It'll be a calendar invite. So that's going to that's gonna help you a lot. Okay, this is the big thing though, guys, is, you know, if you want to, if you want to grow your business, um, you've got to be very disciplined about this and you need to treat this with the respect that it deserves. I mean, um, you know, we were on a, we were on a, um, a webinar and, you know, um, Mike was, Mike Long was talking about, you know, the number of businesses that fail in the United States. And it's, it's basically, you know, like uh, 90% of businesses fail like within the first five years or something like that. And if you consider how much a business has to invest in a, um, you know, say uh, the average business, you know, invests just say $500,000, you know, um, if you have nine, if you have basically, you know, it takes 10 times to get a successful business. It means that, you know, you're investing $5 million to get, you know, a successful business. What's amazing about an agency is you guys don't need, you don't have any overhead. You know, you had to, you invested in infusion and that was a great idea. Um, but right now, like treat it seriously. You know, this is going to give you like, follow these, follow these methods, do one to three value videos and send them out and call people up every day for five days. Um, who's on your list, do your top 100 and everything that was prescribed, the step-by-step -step prescribed steps. And I dare you not to make a, a deal. Like I dare you, you know, in 30 days, not to have, you know, not to have a few clients. So this is infinite prospecting. Um, this will make sure you always have people to reach out to and that you always know what actions to take. And since we're talking about actions, um, I wanted to revisit this slide which is understanding what's important in your business. So this is out of, you know, this is straight from David Mills, millionaire philosopher, um, you know, uh, architect of, of all this stuff. And, you know, there's three main functions in a business. You know, there's the product itself, there's traffic, and then there's a conversion. So when it comes to working on the product, you know, you can, ask yourself the question, you know, how can I be a better SEO? Um, but the thing to keep in mind here, because I've seen a lot of people falling into this rabbit hole, is that you don't need to be the best in the world. Like, actually, all you need to do is be like a seven out of 10. You know, people really think that they need to be a 10 out of 10 or an 11 out of 10. And what they'll do is they'll just learn more and more and more and more and more about SEO. But actually, your product, it really only needs to be a seven out of 10. It needs to be above that threshold. The second thing, the second aspect, crucial aspect of business is your traffic. And so your question is, how can I get more meetings with prospects? And you're looking for three demos a week. That's a really great number to look for, like right at the beginning. And guys, like we've, to a large extent, we've filled in a lot of, we've colored in a lot of the answers for you for how to get more meetings with prospects, because these the last two videos, this um, top 100 list and this infinite prospecting list, like if you just follow those steps, you know, daily, you should be able to get three demos per week. And if you're, you're unable to, and you're doing everything, you know, contact us and we'll get you the help you need. But those steps are going to get there. There's other ways that you can do it as well, but you always want to make sure that if you don't have enough deals, focus on that traffic. Focus on getting those three demos a week. And then the third piece is how can I get better, you know, even better at selling SEO? So you've got a lot of training here. Um, you know, we talk about 30% uh, closing rate as being like a nice way to look at it. Um, we have our advanced course uh, of Sales Machine, which goes even deeper into, you know, mastering uh, sales because, you know, the goal with Fusion is that you guys get your first few clients. You know, you get your first two, first three clients be profiting a, a clean thousand dollars a month. And then, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of times those first few clients come from that top 100, they come from, um, you know, your network. And the reason is because those are easy, the easiest ones to, to close, you know, as you start going into this infinite prospecting method, like you can close those clients, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You know, that's the reason why we recommend, you know, using your, um, 
your referral base first. But Sales Machine is an excellent place to look when it comes to taking that step to becoming really, really, you know, ninja and really lethal in terms of selling uh, SEO deals. Yep. And I don't want to, I want to just temper what you said about it's going to be tougher. It's not necessarily like um, there's no, there's no tougher way to, it's tough to collect money or it's just as easy or hard to get money from anyone. I think the question is, is um, when you getting a chance to sit down with that prospect, it's all about that opportunity. So for example, when I sit down with someone who's a referral or I sit down with somebody who really, somebody who's giving me the time of day that's cold, it's not that different, frankly, of a close rate for me. It's just that it's that opportunity, the quality opportunity, like the patience, the giving me that time. That is the part that is just like, it is so easy, really. The part about your top 100, it really is just a matter, frankly, of reaching out to the people that you know. There's just, it's inevitable that that will not happen, that you will not get opportunities if you reach out to those people. Oh, here's the one thing I forgot. I wanted to interrupt you, Michael, a while ago, but you were on a roll, which was, don't assume that you know anything about that person's business. Mm, Don't great. assume that you know how much they make. Don't assume that you know how many jobs they do per month or how much those jobs are worth. Nothing. Because I found that the people I thought had really successful businesses uh, didn't make a lot of money. And people that you know were driving around in the Toyota Camry for a mm. while, those people have millions of dollars, right? So just keep it. You want to keep that in mind. You get, sometimes people's businesses, they're not about like showing that they have the money. It's about feeling accomplished. So you can't see that. You got to ask the questions. In fact, Michael, I should probably say this just earlier today. I got on the phone with someone, a referral from another company we work with. And they said, Eric, listen, whatever you do, don't charge these people more than a thousand dollars for the service, because I think they're just going to, they're going to fly away. And I get on the phone and I ask this one question, like, so how many jobs do you guys do a week? They're like 70. And the average job is worth like four to six hundred dollars. So, kind of gives you an idea, like how crazy of a concept that is. And, um, you know, I had already said, all right, let's do uh, you know twelve fifty, because, you know, I probably could should have said fourteen ninety five or two thousand bucks, but. I, I knew before that I wasn't going to fall into that pattern of believing that because somebody else made an assumption. So assumptions make an ass out of you and me. Thanks so much, guys. See you on the next video. See ya.